Well, hello there, YouTube, and welcome to Sunday the 15th of May. It's 2022, in case you're watching this at a later date. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it is 20 minutes till 6. And finally, the sun has come out. It has downpoured literally all day long. I'm sure you're probably getting wiped out by wind. I apologize for that. But that's what just left. And it looks like for the next bit, it's going to be nice. What do you think of that? Holy moly. So you guys remember last year, right before Christmas, I took my Himalayan apart and fixed the, the binding swing arm. I don't know if this video is getting pushed by YouTube, why I'm getting all the replies on this thing, but a couple of guys had the exact same problem and they say I didn't explain what I had done. So let me see if I can if I can do this in a way that'll make some sense. So get my little pointer. I'll do Kelly's because it's on the outside here. But this boss right here is what contains the bearing. And this is where the swing arm is pivoting. And this is a spacer in the middle there. And that's that spacer is designed. You can see it right there. If I can get the thing in there. It's that silver spacer right there. And that's the design so you can take that out because the swing arm couldn't go past the shock if that was solid in there. So that's the design to come out. So in the middle of this thing, this is like a boss uh, collar that goes in and protrudes out. And you can see it right there. And it's leaning against this dust cap. Inside that dust cap is a seal. It's like an impregnated rubber to keep dust and everything out. Inside this is the two bearings. And then what rides in the middle of the bearing is a hardened collar. So what had happened <clears throat> is they had grossly over torqued. You remember I had to use that crazy high powered impact wrench just to get the pivot bolt loose. They had torqued it so tight that the bolt, you know, obviously, obviously has strength. And then this uh, bearing collar, you know, it's super, super hard. And this spacer is soft. So this thing, where this joint is designed so that you can, um, what is that on there? I just marked up Kelly's seat. But this is designed so you, with everything loose, you can just kind of jiggle that spacer back and forth and it'll pop out of its little groove and you can take it out of the way. Well, when they over torqued it, because this is less hardened metal, it collapsed the metal right here. So this collar or spacer got shortened. And when it shortened that, it allowed the bearing spacer to move in. And when it moved in, it allowed the this metal uh, dust cover thing. This is all hollow in here. And then this is a little rubber seal. It allowed this to collapse against the swing arm, the, the boss, the pivot boss there. And it was making metal to metal contact right here. And what it was is this collapsing allowed the bearing collar to slide in, which moved the dust cap over and the dust cap, the metal on the inside of that thing was grinding on that. And prior to that, the massive lube that the Indians put in these things that Royal Enfield does, um, it held until it finally ate through the grease and the grease started dispersing. And that's when I noticed that the suspension was getting stiffer and all that weird stuff. So they essentially over torqued this to a point it collapsed that little quick release joint on that softened collar. It didn't have, this didn't have a fighting chance against that, against that hardened bearing collar or spacer didn't have. But anyway, it collapsed it. So I found a shim that would fit inside this cup. I don't, can't believe I found that thing in here, but I found the shim. I don't remember what the what the size was, and uh, but anyway, the inside diameter fit perfectly on the pivot bolt, and I put it inside that cup. I just put some grease in there so it'd stay in place. And of course, you can stick your finger in there and move the washer around so that it's centered, and slide your pivot bolt in. But that spaced it back out so I had this room inside there 
It was too complicated to try to explain that when I was doing it at the time. <laughs> so I hope that helps somebody. Apparently, uh, I'm not the only one that got one that was over torqued. Need to take them uh, high powered air guns or electric guns from them boys on the assembly line. That all needs to be done by hand. You guys know that. So I dragged the Himalayan out, grabbed my gear. Now, a uh, dark cloud from heck is coming. Come on. <laughs> Give me a break, will ya? Although, I should be thankful I'm even pondering the idea of going for a ride, shouldn't I? Oh, look at that cloud. <laughs> yeah, that's not looking real pretty. Alright, let's get this thing going. Oh no, I don't... This, this may definitely be a, a run from the rain today. Because I can see the power line mountains way off in the distance and it's raining on them. My beautiful sunshine. Hello, scariness. Who knows, it might disperse off. I'm not going, I'm just going to take a, a quick neighborhood loop. we got to start off with the old squiggly hill, right? Ooh, it's all wet back here. Oh my goodness. It's been a chill day anyway. That's weird that this old video and uh, they gotta be, I wish they'd like notify you and say, hey, we're gonna push this one. <laughs> Look out, some more questions are gonna come up. It's funny, I, I still get non-stop emails and, and comments about what's the first thing I should do to my bike? You know, should I put shocks on it, extra lights, and all this other crap? You don't even have the thing yet. Ride it. You may find you need to do nothing to it. And the very last thing I would do to something is immediately start throwing cheesy Chinese lights on on them and start messing around with the suspension. <laughs> Ride the thing. What makes me think about that is this thing, you know, acting up. Look at them beautiful horses. Ooh, didn't mean to scare you. Sorry there, feller. So, you know, I, I put those things on my Road King and uh, right away, because they have the inch of sag, they're 13 inch, the Legends. They're 13 inch and they have, you set them up for one inch of sag, immediately my headlights pointing in the air. I dealt with it for a little bit until I realized they were, they were leaking. And that was what, two or three years ago, I still haven't swapped those things out. But you know, put the stock ones on there, and enough times come through they they broke in, and uh, I, I have zero desire to even go through the time to even replace them. They don't do anything wrong, even two with two up. You know, or you reach back there, and uh, I got the amount of clicks I put on the on the uh, the dampening thing there. It's, it's essentially spring preload. And it takes two seconds. You don't have to take the bag off. Just knock it loose. Fold the bag back. Let it lean against your leg. And and then when I'm by myself, I switch it back. But they don't do anything wrong. Would the aftermarket ones be smoother? Well, yeah. <laughs> My point of bringing all this stuff up is people don't even give their bike a chance. And it's the overwhelming attraction to this crap people read on forums and and the, you know of course they go to the website and of course they're going to give you a spiel you know they probably even got videos and everything else telling you how this gadget you put on your 
spider or your Harley or your Himalayan is going to change your world. For safety reasons, this, not, this needs to be done. You always got to throw that safety thing in there. Safety cells. Put the fear in them. I think what kind of drives me nuts more than anything else is a lot of things they put on there don't make it better and in some cases makes it worse. I won't go into details. Just my thing is, is you know, why wouldn't you go out and enjoy the bike? If it needs something, ride it for a while and see what you conjure up that it may need. And people go, well, i got to make it mine. I said, well, that's cool, but don't janky the thing all up. And I think what, what what's very frustrating for like us, where there's very few aftermarket, like on spiders, for example, there's very few of that stuff we even put on. Nope, won't do it. It's just ridiculous. And the quality of these things, and I see the prices of this stuff, and I'm just like, are you kidding me? You know, there them things are being made for literally pennies on the dollar, and they're just so cheaply made. And I'm thinking, I got this really expensive spider and I'm gonna put this kind of stuff on there I don't think so but people are gonna do what they're gonna do and nowadays the way lawyers are I don't want you know I'm getting towards the end where you know retirement is is definitely a reality I don't need to be sitting in front of 12 of my peers being told my livelihood is either gone or in jeopardy because I put something on somebody's motorcycle. No. Ooh, what do we got the flags up for? Did something slip down the hill? Let's go take a look. Or, or is it just warning me not to go down here because it may come get me? you get that thing that falls out of the trees is the seeding and stuff and it that, it that stuff can become slippery I just keep going this way it keeps getting nicer as I go oh man since I did the uh, uh, the fix on the swing arm on this thing you know, I, I just knew something until it made a noise. That's when I'm thinking, all right, something seriously, something's wrong here. You know, it should, well, number one, it should never make that squeaky sound. But, uh, yeah, I thought, okay, I took Kelly's apart because we put the lowering link on it to try to make her bike safe for her. And um, all the grease that was packed in there, and I mean, they do a really good job putting these things together. I mean, they don't leave, they're not worried about getting grease on their assembly line like a lot of other manufacturers. They put just minimal, and more like a preservative than an actual grease. I'm sorry, all the beautiful sunshine I started the vlog off with. I kind of knew early on I was going to go away in the, in the depth over that swing arm thing more than I wanted to. And I, in the back of my head, I'm thinking, I may be able to squeak out a ride here. So I'll try to say this as fast as I can. I was, I was talking about that thing so fast. It made me lose my breath. I'm like, kaka, kaka, kaka. <gasps> breathe, sucker, breathe. <laughs> Kind of scary being out here all alone. All kinds of crazy stuff out here. Come on, old Hemi. You sure are a pleasure to ride, old gal. It's comfortable. Plenty fast. It never seems. The only time it seems wanting is when you're trying to get up to speed really quick and literally that's the only time you notice it 
like going up this hill that thing's pretty steep I didn't, didn't even think about this thing the other nice thing about these things they're so stone simple <laughs> just that the legendary reliability yeah, you probably do you do maintenance more often but it's who cares it's so simple basic hand tools or basic tools that you'd work on motorcycles you know you gotta have feeler gauges and all that kind of <clears throat> kind of jazz there ain't none of them mountains visible out there St. Helens is just gone Rainier you wouldn't even know it was there if you didn't know it was there Oh, Kelly got her uh, because she was a day ahead of mine because I didn't have all the stuff. <clears throat> but she got her uh, enhanced driver's license. So I'm assuming mine being the day after, it'll uh, it'll be here tomorrow. Doesn't look any different other than it says enhanced license. There's supposed to be antennas and all these stuff in there. And it just looks like a regular driver's license. Not any rip on back to the house maybe I can even squeak in a goodbye before the rain hits how about that all right see you guys here in just a moment well hello there YouTube <laughs> only been home about 10 minutes thought I better come get the bike in before I'm putting it putting her away wet yep rains are coming but as nasty as that looked I I thought for sure I'd have been wet a long time ago but just didn't happen it's okay. Good. Yeah, no problem with that. I did get a couple of sprinkles out there, but just kind of just a little passerby, not enough to even stuck to anything. But it does look kind of nasty coming this way. That one looks nice behind us, though, doesn't it? Mm. Or a whole lot nicer. Yes. But anyway, that's that for a Sunday. Mhm. Mm Mom was doing her little artsy fartsy things in there, and I was goofing around doing. A little research even weird things I do on the weekends. I know. Always looking into so I get a little Sound interest in, in and something and way. I go on a on a I go down the rabbit hole. Oh yeah, definitely. Head first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that was fun taking the old Himalayan for a ride. If I didn't think it'd rain, I'd talk to Mama into going out there. I know and I I was thinking there ain't no way he's even gonna need to leave the driveway before the rain hits. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I came out it was black. I come out and it was coming quick. I get, oh man. It's like I come running, I go, golly, not I'm ready. It's pouring out. Or you can see a black cloud. It looks like it poured. But mm -hmm. It didn't. You lucked out. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's that for that. Alrighty. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. We will talk to you tomorrow. Same smoke time, same smoke channel. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And you guys have an amazing Monday or Tuesday. Heck yeah. Thanks for hanging around again today. Yes. And we'll uh, we'll try to do this again tomorrow. Yeah, we'll, see you <laughs> we'll be here. You gonna be here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye bye.